when replacing your clutch on an Indian, you've actually got several choices of different uh, brands on the market. What we'll show here is uh, a couple of them. We'll show one that's uh, made of steel. It's uh, pretty heavy. And this one here comes in at about 1,031 grams, which is two pounds, 4.4 ounces. And then we've got the Kiwi clutch pack that's aluminum backed. And that one comes at 382 grams, which is 13.5 ounces. And what that amounts to is the steel ones are two and three quarter times heavier than the aluminum. Now one of the things you wanna, we do here is the clutch plates themselves. They've got two thicks in here and the rest are thin. And that's like the original setup. So you can just get this plat pack and put it in to your clutch sprocket and it'll work out to, to be spot on. Yeah, the gap, which we'll get into, is to be between eighth inch and, and three sixteenths between the pressure plates. And these ones here always fall in halfway in between at about 532. Steel ones, they're pretty darn heavy. Uh, they're just all one thickness. So if you need to alter the stack up, it, it makes it real difficult. So one of the objects here is always to make, the, make this stuff um, lighter. The other thing is, take into account that when these are in the, um, the clutch plates are, are in, if you see there's a little bit of a little bit of play there. So as the clutch pack is as this is all rotating, these things here tend to go out of balance. Therefore, you're actually going to pick up a vibration through the whole bike. The heavier it is, the more it's magnified. You've all, always got a little bit of play here on the pegs, but uh, the heavier it is, the more this whole thing is just going to be magnified. The other thing is, you've got steel here up against steel studs, and that's a bad recipe. Where with the aluminum, is actually far gentler, and it's not going to chew up the studs. It actually doesn't even chew up the aluminum, but um, it's a far better, better setup. The other thing is this red material that we put on the Kiwi plates. Now we call them an easy release clutch. They release way easier than the stock Indian one. And the other nice thing about it is this has got a nice feel to it. We've actually come up with a particular uh, greater material on here and this pattern. Uh, even though these both look the same, they actually differ. So this material here we've developed actually gives you a good feel. So when you're taking off, you can actually slip the clutch where some of these materials are more in and out. So if you're trying to feather the clutch and take off up a hill or gently from a light, uh, the, some of these materials are just, they bite. They're either in or engaged or disengaged where these ones here have actually put a lot of testing into it and uh, it'll actually give you some nice feel. So you're always taking off nice and smoothly. There's two different clutch hub widths. There's the narrow, which is inch and a quarter and the wide, which is inch and three eighths. You always want to try and run the inch and three eighths clutch hub. What that allows for is more surface area. You can actually set the clutch plate up as we provide it and allow more surface area. So the first disc that goes in is a thick. Then it's a steel. Then you start with your, you follow along with your thins. Steel. And alternate all these, all these ones here will be thins until you get to the last one, which will actually be a thick like so. So your thin are actually eighth inch thick and your thick, the thicks are three sixteenths. This particular bike has the narrow inch and a quarter clutch hub. So what you don't want to do is you can actually see the fiber 
is real close to the edge here. What you don't want to do is have that steel sitting right on the edge. Because once the clutch is released, it's going to come out and get dislodged. So sometimes what you've got to do is you've got to run several fibers together. That's okay. You may have to even add another thick one or a thin one. You can actually run several fibers together because what they are is they, they're driven again, uh, together. So it's not like um, they're going to uh, slip. But they're actually just acting as a spacer. This is the original steel clutch pressure plate set up on an Indian. Uh, as the dowel pins here. And the 16 springs sit on these dowel pins. And then are compressed like so. Uh, what Indian had on some bikes, it's random, it's called clutch chatter. It's a vibration, so when you're releasing the clutch, or you're going to take off, you'll actually feel this shudder vibration going through the bike. And that's clutch chatter. Um, Indian fought that for on and off over the years. What we did is we come out with this aluminum setup. And what it does, uh, it actually captures the springs. The springs are actually captured into these recesses where the original one, what happened is they just sat on pegs and they can vibrate around. So this is actually a, a, a good positive setup. Really good if you're using it on a, on a um, especially sidecar applications, this is absolutely bulletproof. But um, the difference here is, is a lot of, uh, this one here is lower, lower um, weight. Uh, the original one comes in at 660 grams, which is one pound, 7.3 ounces. And the Kiwi clutch release plate comes in at 308 grams, which is 10.9 ounces. That's under half the weight. Uh, it's actually, a, uh, this thing here, if you get the chance, always upgrade to this. It's a good positive setup, plus it's lighter weight. One other important thing that we've uh, designed into the uh, pressure plate setup is these have recesses in here to capture the other end of the spring. So it's actually captured in its hole, a recess, and then also this little recess in the other part of the pressure plate. Whereas the original ones, they just sit out here and they can float around. So it's on the bike, it's gonna look like so. These ones here, it's gotta be indexed. So all the springs are actually captured at both ends. So you're not gonna get any clutch chatter. Now if you've pipped up your bike to 80 inch, 84 inch, you really wanna run Actually, even if you've got a good running 74 Bonneville, you really want to upgrade to this Kiwi pressure plate assembly. Apply some grease to the clutch release bearing. Now, got to watch out for some. If you're reusing some used ones, what Indian did for some years, it was actually, they had some that were dead flat. As you can see, this has actually got a, a race in it, ground into it. Uh, Indian tried a flat one, so it actually sat like so. Uh, what happened, what their theory was that it would self-center itself, but what would happen is it gave head, it was, um, it actually failed. Uh, it had high edge loading on the edge of these balls. So that was a failure. If you got that, throw that away. Uh, always make sure you've got uh, both races, the top and bottom, or inner and outer have the ground and radius race in them. Always put some grease on them because you don't want a dry start up. And it sits into the pressure plate like so. Now, of late there's some badly made 
clutch worms on the market. This is actually, there's actually good ones and bad ones. This one here is an original. This is a poorly made reproduction. It's actually butter soft. These have to be heat treated. Um, the original ones and the, the, the ones we sell, manufacture, are heat treated to around 60 Rockwell C. Um, these are just, these cheap, well that's not even cheap. Uh, that's, these ones are still quite expensive, but they left off a very important step. What happens is you've got 16 springs that are in the clutch pressure plate. That this is actually working like so. So what you're doing is all the stress of these 16 springs is pulled against the clutch worm. And this is going to work, this is going to wear out in no time. So this here has to be heat treated. This one here will last forever like original ones do versus that one there, poorly made reproduction, and it's not going to last long at all. Set your 16 springs on the pressure plate. Drop the inner one on. Sort of line up the notches. Don't have to be perfect at this stage. Drop the clutch worm in. This is a great tool to have. This is a clutch compression tool. We replicate it like the original. This makes clutch in installation a breeze. So, just screws on like so. So, 9 16 wrench. Put on your worm. And all we're going to do, what we're going to do is we've got to check for the clutch distance down here. Uh, this is actually going to be between 8 and 3 16 of an inch. So, just for setting up, we're just going to put three nuts. On the outside, we don't have to put the six on it. We're just going to use the three. Now that we've got the three nuts on that are evenly spaced around the outside, undo the worm. Just release the tension off compression tool. And then what we're looking for down here is the gap between the two pressure plates. Now this gap is supposed to be between eight and three sixteenths of an inch. So long as you're between eighth and three sixteenths of an inch. Easy way to test is just get a drill bit, set it down there, and see where you're at. But the bottom line is, it's this gap here between the two pressure plates, the two steel pressure plates, has to be eighth, or has to be between eighth and three sixteenths of an inch. Once you've arrived at your correct uh, clutch pressure plate gap, uh, put these nuts on with blue Loctite. Uh, we use blue Loctite. Originally they had lock washers. A lot of guys still use lock washers. I've actually seen more failures because people have incorrectly put on the lock washers. So we've always used blue Loctite and never ever will you have a failure with that. But before you put Loctite on threads, always make sure that there's no oil residue on them whatsoever. Loctite will not stick to oil, so clean them well, and then put blue Loctite on the threads and just tighten them up. Tighten them up. Apply some grease to the clutch worm, and apply some lube to the generator drive shaft, and uh, fit this little gasket on the inner primary there. That's uh, quite an important one that most people tend to overlook. And this will be an oil leak problem. And uh, we use genuine James gaskets. Like you see, it's a coated gasket with silicon bead on it. Very, very high quality gasket.
Make sure the generator drive bushing and the outer case is in good condition. Just put on, turn the, the worm and I'll actually pull in the primary cover. Uh, just make sure the generator drive shaft's lined up with this bushing and there's two dowel pins to help locate the cover. Just do that and actually it'll pull this cover in. Put your primary cover bolts in. Just uh, proceed cautiously on this one here. This one here is a quarter coarse thread. Uh, it's usually just threaded, it's just threaded into the transmission case. I uh, see a lot of guys just getting too carried away on it and end up stripping them out. In this case, we've put a helicoil in it, so we've we've fixed a problem. But just don't get too carried away on this one because if you strip this one out, it's a major ordeal. You actually got to pull the whole transmission apart to uh, fix it. Adjust the primary chain so the up and down movement is about half the distance of this hole, which is about three eighths of an inch. Adjust the generator drive shaft. If you're using a generator belt, make sure it's on. If not, put some nuts on behind the bolts because this needs to be clamped. Uh, you can just sit the pulley on there. Just makes it a little bit easier to feel the back and forwards motion. Basically, you're gonna wind this adjusting screw in so it just barely stops and then back it off about an eighth of a turn. And that's going to give you about 10 thousandths end float. Then lock up the nut, just double check it. This is generally a source of an oil leak on Indians. Make sure the clutch worm is free of oil. Just wipe it down with something like lacquer thinner. And then put a, a, a gooby, big gooby chunk of... Um, we use Yamabond 56, uh, Yamabond uh, number four. And then just put the worm on, the spacer on, or the collar, and just twist it. And what that'll do is that'll get all the sealant between the worm and the inside diameter of the collar. Most people don't put anything on, and that's why oil just keeps wanting to piss out of this area. Um, just put a little bit of oil on here. Now we use a silicon o-ring. It's actually quite a bit more expensive than the normal black neoprene o-ring. Uh, this actually, if, if you've got too much friction here, what happens is it screws up this whole mechanism and it just doesn't feel right. So I found silicon, uh, even though it's got its own sealant on it, um, I like silicon, it's, it's uh, far less drag than one of these. Yes, it's more money, it works far better. So I, I highly advise going to the silicon o-ring, which is the one we carry. Put a bit of Loctite 567 on the threads. Once again, all this stuff here is stuff that people don't do, and they wonder why they've got a leak coming out of the, the, uh, the primary cover. And just screw it on. Now the ideal tool is actually the valve cover tool. It's exactly the same diameter, so if you need to get a nice little bit of tension on there, you can do so. Now this worm, or this uh, worm lever, you need to position this in the right. That's actually too far down. That's actually too far up. Uh, the ones that we make are these levers. The cut in here, is actually, we've done it different than it, we've indexed it differently than stock. So what happens is when you turn it around, you've actually got another adjustment in between. So that there, yep. And you always want a good, nice, firm fit onto here, but that's the angle it's probably around 2 o'clock, 2.30. That's your ideal angle. It's when you're going to come up and you can feel the tension. 
This is the oil we like to use. This Joe Gibbs Driven 50 weight. It's extremely good oil. We've done a lot of testing on it. Um, this is the where you pour the oil in. And this is the oil level hole. I cover this real extensively in our oil change videos. So go to those and follow those very specifically. I get into some detail because you've got sealed transmissions, non-sealed, and uh, it's easy not to put enough oil on it. So listen to those, well, watch those videos and that'll be very beneficial to you.